Why do things go wrong for expat in the, expat, <laughs> expats in the Philippines? Um, I'm going to cover this in a quite broad sense, but a lot of these topics will hit a nerve with some people. The first one is um, the real relationships that are not relationships. They do not recognize the real values of the relationships. Um, the first one being is maybe the woman is not committed to the relationship, but committed to the wallet. Recognize it if that's what the relationship's about, then recognize that's what it's about. If it's a real relationship, do not recognize it as one that's attached to the wallet because that will also damage the relationship. And it may sound complex, but it is not. You can see this stuff written all over people's faces. Um, very, very short term. The other thing is, um, when they get into relationships, make sure you want to be in one. A lot of guys get married, then go to the Philippines, or they move to the Philippines, in the sense that they can have a Filipino wife abroad, move to the Philippines, or they met somebody in the Philippines and move to the Philippines. Get married, and then suddenly realize it's a candy shop, and then go off the rails a bit. If you're, if you're not sure, don't get married. If you're married abroad, decide whether the Philippines is right for you. Um, a lot of people I know, well, sorry, nearly every guy I know that's moved from the west to the east have gone off the rails. And it's funny how a lot of guys complain about women doing doing the dirty when they go to the west. Guys do it all the time, the other way around. There is nothing to say you have to get married. Nothing. The only reasons you really need to get married is related to visas, related to pensions and things like that. Um, it is a contractual obligation. It is not a sign of love or anything else. It's a contract. Um, because unless you're religious, it is a contract. If you're religious, then you probably got a higher level of commitment, or should have, should I say. Should have a kind of level of commitment that says marriage is for life. If you haven't got that commitment, I say you're not as religious as you should be. My personal view. Um, the other thing is marrying the wrong types of women by, you know, going with girls in bars and stuff. Those girls have often had very difficult lives to begin with. They get used and abused by their parents. They're working in the bars with the consent of their parents that they send their money from messing around with um, foreigners and locals um, in a sexual way. The money goes to their parents. Now, not being funny, but is that marriage material? And I've been to expat gatherings where you've got guys that bring these girls with the short skirts and everything else, and you can see women separating. You've got the 40-somethings somewhere where they're sitting there with their fake Prada handbags comparing cars. You've got um, the girls that work in the bars in another group, the smoking and whatever in another group, and then you've got another group which is normally everybody else. Reality is, Filipinas already recognize their own groupings. Why can't an expat? Let's be honest. Would you marry a prostitute in your own country? Answer that question yourself on a postcard and you can send it to them. Um, but the, the point being is, recognize this. Because you cannot sit there and complain about somebody's moral compass when you pick them up in the bar in the first place because a lot of them have gone in there at a young age, a lot of them have got no moral compass because it's been destroyed from their childhood. Um, yeah, I'll leave it at that because I could broaden that right out, but I'll leave it at that. But you've got to understand, a lot of the money goes back to their parents. Their parents are well aware of what a lot of these girls are doing. And in fact, they've often encouraged it. Um, drinking. Heavy drinking is another major issue in the Philippines. A lot of people have too much time on their hands, and this is why you have so many keyboard warriors in the Philippines, because they've got nothing else to do. At the same time, there's people I know that at 10 a.m. have already started drinking, and drinking heavily, and they drink all day long, and all day, every day. Um, and you'll see them at 3 a.m. when they've got up for their tequila or whatever, and they'll start going on the forums and stuff, and attacking other people on there. That's not the way to do your twilight years or any years. You're better off actually going out and doing something else. 
you're drinking yourself to death, but also any connection you may have with some foreigners you're destroying online as well. Um, there's a lot of people that do that. The biggest thing a lot of people do, don't do is have hobbies and things to fill the day. Um, personally, I recommend connecting with your co as a couple. So there's a lot of stuff you can do together, cooking together, whatever. I'm not going to go through a list. I'm not. This isn't a uh, video on uh, keeping your relationship alive. But that's one of the things. The relationship is not a relationship as well. This is where you often find the woman is sat on her mobile phone while the guy is sitting talking to his, his friends or whatever. Or when you go around the house, the woman is sat on the sofa on her mobile phone while you're sitting chatting. There is no engagement in that relationship. I'm not about between somebody visiting the house because that's, that's a telltale sign as well. But the fact is the, the relationship is not connected between the two people that are in it. Um, those relationships are not real and over time they will deteriorate, they'll, they'll get worse if it can because you're not really in a relationship to start with um, but you are looking at somebody spending most of their time on a mobile phone talking to their friends back in their village, town or whatever, their cousins, nieces and everybody else rather than speaking to you that sat in the same room. That is another thing you need to stamp out in a relationship. There is no reason for them to be doing it. If there's no engagement there, why the hell would you marry somebody that doesn't talk to you? Um, the other thing is, it's causing trouble in the local neighborhoods. A lot of the stuff in the Philippines is near impossible to change, but it's often not very well accepted to go with a sledgehammer either. The easiest way I find to deal with things I have an issue with is using the old women network where you speak to whoever you're connected with, your your wife's mother or whoever, and it eventually goes around to the person who's causing the trouble via somebody that is at a peer level that can actually get them to do as they're told. Because you go out there yelling at them, embarrass them in front of their friends, they ain't going to stop doing it. In fact, it could be quite dangerous as well. Using the old women network, they, they use the nagging approach. The nagging approach seems to work quite well in the Philippines. And I found it worked on all sorts of things. It, it just diffuses everything. Because the mother's being embarrassed because the woman three, three doors down is having a jab at her about something that the son is doing and is making the mother look bad in, in front of her friends so then she starts bugging the son because the son still lives at home or whatever so he then toes the line very simple to defuse things in the same way if you're in a location where you have no idea who you're talking to be very careful there's been many a bar shut down because of upsetting somebody they didn't know who was there. For example, a mayor's son, or the mayor's adopted son, or whoever. Somebody that can actually remove the licenses, but may actually do far worse than that if they choose to do it to them. Um, the Philippines is slowly changing, but at the end of the day, I expect that will still remain even after you know the, chain, the current changes go. go keep on going because at the end of the day these people will still retain their seats in power. Um, so it's something to be aware of. Do not assume Western law suits the Philippines. Um, a lot of the time you could be up against people that are related. So complaining about somebody crashing into your car or whatever, you then take it to the local judge or the police or whatever, but they will not do anything about it because they know the person who crashed into you. Um, there was a guy I met a few years back um, in Suffolk because he had to leave the Philippines after he ran into the mayor's car in, in the town he was in because he was in fear of his life. There's many things in the Philippines that will make your life very difficult if you choose to create an environment that is often assuming that you can do what you like. In the West, it's very sanitized. In the East, a lot of the stuff that's still rough, 
it's still like a rough diamond. You may polish it or whatever, but it's still going to be a rough di diamond. Um, just be careful. That's all I can say on that. Just be realistic. People say count to ten or whatever. Well, I would say have a think and then count to ten. So, for example, if somebody runs into your car, who are they? And yes, you're in the right, but is it worth a car? This is why a lot of the time in the Philippines, I don't bother with stuff that's too expensive. I do not want the hassle. When the, the TV got stolen from the Sari Sari store, my question is, why was it in there? Because it shouldn't have been in there in the first place. Anything that's inside has a risk of being stolen because it has high value. So the point being is, you're aware of these things. And you may think, well, it shouldn't be like that. No, many things shouldn't be like that. But the point is, they are. You ain't going to change it. But if you want to have a good life in the Philippines, adapt to what makes it safe, adapt to what makes it easy for you, and recognize that, A, you don't have to get married, B, you don't even need a vehicle a lot of the time, and C, go with the flow. Don't fight against the tide. Thanks for watching.